All right, welcome everyone. I apologize for being a few minutes late. I was making some last minute adjustments. And as per usual, I'm just gonna ask if you can hear me and then we're gonna jump right into it. And so today we have some very interesting news um, via the Fed. Um, as you know, I've been tracking this for like the last few months. And this is something that I have uh, anticipated and calculated into my projections for some time now, because I know that a lot um, is riding on this going forward. So, okay, perfect, perfect. All right, I'm glad you can hear me. Can you shout me out? <laughs> hey, Robbie, <laughs> I appreciate you. Let's see, awesome. Thank you, Peter, for becoming a member. Awesome. Okay, great. I'm glad you guys can hear me. Okay. So um, let's start with um, Dogecoin. And we can, we'll obviously um, start touching on it and coming back to it. But we're also going to talk about the Fed meeting as well. And some of the, uh, pretty much the main factor that I got, I got out of the Fed meeting because that entire document was pretty much fluff. And it just pretty much made me double down on my thoughts that I got from the last meeting uh, going forward. But we're going to talk about that in a moment. Let's just look at um, Dogecoin here, go over some points and also take a look here at the chart. So when it comes to the Dogecoin, uh, as you guys know, I don't push um, hype or like like BS and stuff like that to get views or clicks and all that kind of stuff. Um, I mostly look at the facts and the charts and compare macro and micro to get an idea of the momentum and the growth of the coin. So the biggest thing that we have uh, for Dogecoin and still is, and it's outside of the overall market and whether or not it's going to expand or contract, and that is the AMC catalyst. Um, I believe that is the most important catalyst that we have this year as far as for utility. And Dogecoin's survival, its growth, um, its purpose is all going to be tied into utility. The other things that we have are great. Um, Doge One is great. Um, Tesla uh, integration is uh, great. Um, GameStop's integration is great. Um, you know, that may play a part into utility. I'm not sure um, how many people are buying uh, games versus just streaming them, but um, that, that's what plays a part. But as far as for an actual event um, that is not circled around hype or momentum to that, that can pretty much just create a similar pattern to what we saw with um tesla integration uh let's see um the tesla merch announcement which was right around here on the 15th let me circle it for you this is the tesla and we know shorts came in this is where tesla pretty much came in right here shorts came in um Caused a bit of panic and fear, got the downward momentum, and then we went down and tested the bottom again. That's going to happen when you're counting on catalyst and um, hype to push the coin. And that's not what we do here. That's not the, uh, the purpose of the coin, because when you have hype and catalyst, what and I think what a lot of people forget is, um, and I know a lot of a lot of it is because some people in the community and like YouTubers and blogs and stuff, they push um, hype. But what we're forgetting is when you have hype and these major catalysts come up and you see the momentum building, those are not people that are not necessarily, uh, a lot of those people are not necessarily long in the coin or even care what happens to the coin. They're there to turn a profit relatively quickly and capitalize off of the hype. So you'll see whales and all this momentum and funds coming in. You have to keep in mind that a lot of those people are going to be, um, they may not necessarily be shorting the coin, but they, they're probably short as in short term on the coin. So if you double that with people that actually hate the coin and, are, and literally want to short it down, uh, and if you tie in um, the whales and a lot of the new momentum and the new people that came into the coin are simply looking to turn a profit and they're going to sell off, then you have the trajectory to have something similar to what happened here with the Tesla merch, which is this huge run up and then the huge run down and pretty much and even overcorrected and came down further than it did from the time of the uh, announcement. And to save everyone uh, a headache and all that kind of stuff like that, we need to focus more so on um, utility. 
And, and again, I think AMC right now is our greatest catalyst for that. So um, ever, ever since January, I said that I believe that this um, the spread here I drew was going to be respected. And so far it has been. And um, I said that we potentially could come up and get another touch. We almost did. And we're pretty much trending sideways. I do not see this um, changing until we get some definite information from the Fed. And I was hoping to kind of get an idea of that today, and we did not. Um, so it looks like this is going to be uh, pretty much our range probably until um, March 16th, which is the next public uh, Fed meeting. So um, you can expect, so if, you're, if your average or DCA is higher and you want to get into the teens, you still have roughly um, a month, depending on um, what comes out in those Fed and the, the Fed meeting on the 16th. But I anticipate that, um, depending on that, I anticipate that they're going to be a little lenient uh, in that meeting. Uh, I'll get into why in a moment. But when we look at the minutes that came out today, and they pretty much said a lot of stuff that we already knew, um, saying that, oh, they believe that eventually inflation is going to go down. Um, some contradictions in there as well, because I listened to Apple and um, like Google and some of the big suppliers in the country that were saying that they were going to have uh, supply issues and they didn't expect it to be resolved until 2023. They said that it didn't um, have a, you know, it, it pretty much they didn't see it concluding itself this year. And even Jerome Powell said that in the uh, Fed meeting uh, last month. And now in the meeting minutes today, they're saying that, oh, they believe that it's going to resolve itself uh, relatively soon, uh, hinting at it's going to be like this year. They believe that inflation is at its peak. And um, they mentioned that they were concerned about um, hiking the interest rates too, um, too aggressively, too quickly and uh, shocking the market pretty much and sending us into a downward trajectory. They mentioned that. And the biggest contradiction I had was if the actual companies, and don't get me wrong, I'm not saying the people at the Fed are ignorant, but I do believe we're in a unique situation. And I do believe what has worked may not necessarily work this time. But um, when you have the Fed saying the opposite of what the actual companies that are pretty much on the front line of these supply issues, when they say that, yeah, we're not going to resolve that this year. It'll probably be 2023 before we get those supply chain uh, issues resolved completely. And of course, that pretty much is code word for we're going to have to factor that in, which is a form of inflation on the uh, actual prices of these goods. And the Fed have released some minutes saying that, oh, yeah, yeah we're, we're looking at pretty much soon. This is going to be resolved. We believe Fed had the interest rates have peaked and pretty much a complete omission of anything to do with uh, specific rates um, that they were looking at to raise and um, the frequency of them, like complete omission, didn't even hint at that it was even on the table. And and Jerome did this in the last meeting as well when they asked him directly uh, plenty of times, so it's like at least two times. And he pretty much said they haven't discussed it yet. And I've said this numerous times in my videos that that is a lie um you know even with this secret meeting i'm sure they brought it up in the meeting um monday or sunday um to go over uh, what, what the pretty much the plan was for this week which i believe they kind of just finalized what they were going to put out in the minutes but i do believe that they have an idea of how aggressive they need to be and how many rate hikes but again b based on what i felt and even uh, they confirmed it in the meeting minutes today that they are afraid of sending panic through the market. And this leads me to believe that I think that this may actually even be worse. I, it has an opportunity to be worse than I thought, because I think that the Fed is so fearful of repeating uh, 2018, where they, the rumors got out and people pretty much started panicking that the, money, that the uh, injections of the money wasn't going to come into the market. And they confirmed that they still pretty much are going to end tapering in March. So that's still on the table that the money next month is the last injection of, you know, funny money uh, into the market. But this leads me to believe that they're afraid of repeating 2018. So they may do like a quarter of a percent or something like that to kind of ease us into 
um, this adjustment in the market. And my biggest concern is if they are not wanting to shock the market overall and just be the main reason that the market and to send panic and be the main reason that the market is going down and they're not aggressive enough soon, this may result in higher inflation and it getting away from them. Um, so that's something we're going to have to kind of look at, look at and monitor um, to make sure that, um, you know, we are being uh, a little strategic with our entries and uh, being in the market because the next few months are going to be really tricky. There's a lot. Um, there's a reason that the Fed is tap dancing around this. And, you know, obviously we're going to see um, ultimately how this is going to play out in the market long term. But make no mistake, there is they're being very strategic with their words. And one of the reasons why um, they're tap dancing around. And of course, um, rumors of the war. Yeah, so that, uh, yeah, you know, they'll use war or whatever catalyst they can to uh, send the market around. But if you look at the um, overall in the market, like I think that unless it's an actual breakout of war, I think short term it'll have an effect. But it really just depends on how much of a war, uh, well, how involved the administration decides to get into this. And of course, as of right now, um, we're not sure. So, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market, but I think that the reason we got like those rallies today was because um, the pretty much the Fed minutes said nothing negative. They pretty much just doubled down on what we already knew and what Jerome said in the last meeting and again, completely omitted everything that was of importance. So, you know, with that, you'll have a positive um, move on the market. So up until we have because we have tax returns and all that kind of stuff coming back. So up until we get some concrete information from the market, I mean, excuse me, from the feds, make no mistake that this can, a lot of the coins that are not like some of the market makers, expect them to trend sideways or just hold their position and expect some of the ones like institutional favors, the ones that are um, mostly bought by institutions for funds, ETFs and stuff like that, expect them to uh, it, it's, it's very possible that you can see them in the green, but the major catalyst for the market has not changed. So you can see these rallies, maybe even in Bitcoin, uh, SPY for sure, some of these major um, ETFs, NASDAQ, stuff like that. You can see the uh, them react positively to this news, quote unquote. But just keep in mind that nothing has been resolved. And you still we still do not know any more about these interest rate hikes than we did a month ago or two months ago. They're still they're literally dragging this out to the last moment. So, um, you know, this you know, uh, in the middle of next month, March 16th is going to be a really big day. Um, you know, I'd say depending on what happens there, that'll determine the next few months. So, um, you know, as I said, just make sure that you give yourself the opportunity to um, average in. You know, it's okay to always be buying some, but just give yourself this, spread it out, in my opinion, and give yourself the opportunity to purchase, to, to capitalize off of a potential dip because they really have two choices. They're going to have to be either aggressive early on or inflation, or they'll come out and say, we don't want to shock the market. Let's do a quarter of a percent. And then inflation keeps growing. And then they have to come back and say, okay, we need to be more aggressive. So we're either going to get our dip now or later. But that, um, you know, and them saying that, oh, inflation is going to go down eventually. Yeah, everybody believes that um, we've, you know, we've seen that historically. That's not the issue. The question is when and how and when are you guys going to get it under control? So, um, you know, this is this is literally a game of entries and patience right now. So if you can um, master those two, the people that are in position on this movement, you're going to be rewarded very uh, handsomely for your patience and being able to. Um, navigate the market. So um, this is why I'm saying if you have cash or if you're able to, um, you know, raise money, you know, just again, give yourself time. Don't necessarily dump it all in and say that, oh, 5%, this is the dip because you can't, nobody can time the bottom, but we do have a time when it comes down to these major catalysts. And so, you know, you don't have to plan it like around Doge One or the, um, you know, any of these big moves that's coming in the market, 
but we know that the Fed has a lot of influence on the institutional money, which makes up the majority of the money that's in the um, in the market. So, um, you know, just kind of play it by ear and we kind of have to stay on, stay on top of things, but we have those dates. So we know kind of where to look to, what at least where to plan around. That'll give us an idea of the next few months. So market makers, potentially Bitcoin, SPY and stuff like that, not impossible for them to rally up until we get some concrete information from the red. And if they're not market makers, um, expect them to kind of like hold their position or even trend sideways, at least for another month. I'll continue to track this and report back to you guys to make sure that we are all on the same page as a community to make sure that we still have the ability of the, the, the option of choice when it comes down to um, our methods of exchange. And when it comes down to exchange, uh, my partners over at Skillshare, they have an offer for you guys where you're able to try their programs um, for free for a period of time. And I'm gonna tell you all about it right now. Skillshare is an online community that hosts thousands of classes um, where you can learn new skills, uh, deepen your existing passions, or simply fall down a creative rabbit hole. Um, they offer classes like finances, entrepreneurship, and even stock investing. And that's one of the reasons I'm bringing it up to you because I think that most of the community can find this actually useful. I'm actually starting with Productivity for Creators um, by Thomas Frank um, because more so it's more so about me uh, starting to build and get more organized um, with through my productivity because of the growth that I'm seeing here on YouTube and like my actual investments that I have outside of um, YouTube. So it's just more so um, laying the groundwork so that I'm not being pulled in so many directions and as I try to expand uh, my investments because typically that's what takes up most of my time and I know a lot of you guys get on me about not uh, uploading every day so that I'm working to increase my productivity so that I can be more present on YouTube and balance my outside investments. The best thing about Skillshare is it's curated specifically for learning. There's no ad so you're not gonna see a break or in, in any of the um, classes that you take that are specific to your, um, your interest, so it's pretty much just gonna be go from start to finish. Now, I wanted to provide exceptional value for you all, so the first 1,000 people that click the link in my bio, you actually get a free month of Skillshare to try out. And again, they have classes on just about everything. I know most of the people that watch my channel are geared toward finances, so you can certainly take classes on stock investing, finances, uh, entrepreneurship, web development, uh, really, this pretty much if you have an interest, it's almost guaranteed to be on Skillshare and you can have access to that for one month just to try it out by using the link that I have in my bio. Feel free to check it out and let me know what you think. With that being said, I hope you found value in this video. Please consider giving the video a like and subscribing to the channel. And don't forget about BlockFi. If you open an account with them, you can get up to $250 in some of your favorite crypto, including in Bitcoin and Ethereum. I appreciate all of you. Thank you. Until next time.